Chapter Nineteen of A Daughter of Today by Sarah Jeanette Duncan. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Bruce Peary. I have mentioned that Miss Bell had looked considerations of sentiment very full in the face at an age when she might have been expected to be blushing and quivering before them with downcast countenance she had arrived at conclusions about them conclusions of philosophic indifference and some contempt she had since frequently talked about them to janet cardiff with curious disregard of time and circumstance mentioning her opinion in a strand omnibus for instance that the only dignity attaching to love as between a man and a woman was that of an artistic idea janet had found elfrida possessed of so savage a literalism in this regard that it was only in the most heartily adventurous of the moods of investigation her friend inspired that she cared to combat her here it was not janet told herself that she was afraid to face the truth in any degree of nakedness but she rose in hot inward rebellion against elfrida's borrowed psychological cynicisms they were not the truth tolstoy had not all the facts perhaps from pure muscovite inability to comprehend them all the spirituality of love might be a western product she was half inclined to think it was but at all events it existed and it was wanton to leave out of consideration a thing that made all the difference moreover if these things ought to be probed and janet was not of serious opinion that they ought to be for her part she preferred to obtain advices thereon from between admissible and respectable book covers it hurt her to hear them drop from elfrida's lips lips so plainly meant for all tenderness janet had an instinct of helpless anger when she heard them the woman in her rose in protest less on behalf of her sex than on behalf of elfrida herself who seemed so blind so willing to revile so anxious to reject do you really hope you will marry elfrida had asked her once and janet had answered candidly of course i do and i want to die a grandmother too vraiment exclaimed miss bell ironically with a little shudder of disgust i hope you may that was in the very beginning of their friendship however and so vital a subject could not remain outside the relations which established themselves more and more intimately between them as the days went on janet began to find herself constantly in the presence of a temptation to bring the matter home to elfrida personally in one way or another as young women commonly do with other young women who are obstinately unorthodox in these things to say to her in effect your turn will come when he comes these pseudo philosophies will vanish when he looks at them like snow in spring you will succumb you will succumb but she never did something in elfrida's attitude forbade it her opinions were not vagaries and she held them so far as they had a personal application haughtily janet felt and disliked the tacit limitation and preferred to avoid the clash of their opinions when she could besides her own ideas upon the subject had latterly retired irretrievably from the light of discussion she had one day found it necessary to lock the door of her soul upon them in the new knowledge that had taken sweet possession of her she recognized that they were no longer theoretical they must be put away she challenged herself to sit in a jury upon love and found herself disqualified the discovery had no remarkable effect upon janet she sometimes wasted an hour pen in hand in inconsequent reverie and worked till midnight to make up and she took a great liking for impersonal conversations with miss halifax about kendall's pictures methods and meanings she found dining in royal geographical circles less of a bore than usual and deliberately laid herself out to talk well she looked in the glass sometimes at a little vertical line that seemed to be coming at the corners of her mouth and wondered whether at twenty-four 
one might expect the first indication of approaching old maidenhood when she was paler than usual she reflected that the season was taking a good deal out of her she was bravely and rigidly commonplace with kendall who told her that she ought to drop it and go out of town she was not looking well she drew closer to her father and at the same time armed her secret against him at all points janet would have had any one know rather than he she felt that it implied almost a breach of faith of comradeship to say nothing of the complication of her dignity which she wanted upheld in his eyes before all others in reality she made him more the sovereign of her affections and the censor of her relations than nature designed lawrence cardiff to be in the parental connection it gave him great pleasure that he could make his daughter a friend and accord her the independence of a friend it was a satisfaction to him that she was not obtrusively filial her feeling for kendall under the circumstances would have hurt him if he had known of it but only through his sympathy and his affection he was unacquainted with the jealousy of a father but in janet's eyes they made their little world together indispensable to each other as its imaginary hemispheres she had a quiet pain in the infrequent moments when she allowed herself the full realization of her love for kendall in the knowledge that she of her own motion had disturbed its unities and its ascendancies since that evening at lady halifax's when janet saw john kendall reddening so unaccountably she had felt singularly more tolerant of elfrida's theories she combated them as vigorously as ever but she lost her dislike to discussing them as it became more and more obvious that kendall found in elfrida a reward for the considerable amount of time he spent in her society janet arrived at the point of encouraging her heresies especially with their personal application she took sweet comfort in them she hoped they would not change and she was too honest to disguise to herself the reason if elfrida cared for him janet assured herself the case would be entirely different she would stamp out her own feeling without mercy to the tiniest spark she would be glad in time to have crushed it for elfrida though it did seem that it would be more easily done for a stranger someone she wouldn't have to know afterwards but if elfrida didn't care as a matter of principle janet was unable to see the least harm in making her say so as often as possible they were talking together in the cardiff's library late one june afternoon when it seemed to janet that the crisis came that she could never again speak of such matters to elfrida without betraying herself things were growing dim about the room the trees stood in dusky groups in the square outside there was the white glimmer of the tea-things between them and just light enough to define the shadows round the other girl's face and write upon it the difference it bore in janet's eyes to every other face oh elfrida was saying it does make life more interesting i admit up to a certain point and i suppose it is to be condoned from the point of view of the species whoever started us and wants us to go on excuses marriage i suppose and of course the men are not affected by it but for women it is degrading horrible especially for women like you and me to whom life may mean something else fancy being the author of babies when one could be the author of books don't tell me you'd rather i said janet oh i'm out of it but i approve the principle besides the commonplaceness the eternal routine the being tied together the the domestic virtues it must be death absolute death to any fineness of nature no elfrida went on decisively people with anything in them that is worth saving may love as much as they feel disposed but they ought to keep their freedom and some of them do nowadays do you mean said janet slowly that they dispense with the ceremony they dispense with the condition they 
they don't go so far i thought you didn't believe in platonics janet answered with wilful misunderstanding you know i don't believe in them any more elfrida added lightly than i believe in this exaltation you impute to the race of a passion it shares with with the mollusks it's pure self-flattery there was a moment's silence elfrida clasped her hands behind her head and turned her face toward the window so that all the light that came through was softly gathered in it janet felt the girl's beauty as if it were a burden pressing with literal physical weight upon her heart she made a futile effort to lift it with words elfrida she said you are beautiful to to hurt to-night why has nobody ever painted a creature like you it was as if she touched an inner spring of the girl's nature touched it electrically elfrida leaned forward consciously with shining eyes truly am i janetta ah to-night well yes perhaps to-night i am it is an effect of chiaroscuro but what about always what about generally janetta i have such horrid doubts if it weren't for my nose i should be satisfied yes i think i should be satisfied but i can't deceive myself about my nose janetta it's thick it isn't a particularly spiritually minded nose janet laughed but console yourself it's thoughtful elfrida put her elbows on her knees and framed her face with the palms of her hands if i am beautiful to-night you ought to love me do you love me janetta really love me could you imagine she went on with a whimsical spoiled shake of her head any one else doing it janetta's fingers closed tightly on the arm of her chair was it coming already then yes she said slowly i could imagine it well more than one elfrida insisted prettily more than two or three a dozen perhaps quite a dozen janet smiled is that to be the limit of your heartless proceedings i don't know how soon one would grow tired of it maybe in three or four years but for now it is very amusing playing with fire bah elfrida returned going back to her other mood i'm not inflammable but to that extent if you like i value what you and the poets are pleased to call love it's part of the game one might as well play it all it's splendid to win anything it's a kind of success oh i know she went on after an instant i have done it before i shall do it again often it is worth doing to sit within three feet of a human being who would give all he possesses just to touch your hand and to tacitly dare him to do it stop elfrida shan't stop my dear not only to be able to check any such demonstration yourself with a movement a glance a turn of your head but without even a sign to make your would-be adorer check it himself and to feel as still and calm and superior to it all is that nothing to you it's less than nothing it's hideous i consider it a compensation vested in the few for the wrongs of the many elfrida replied gaily and i mean to store up all the compensation in my proper person that i can i believe you have had more than your share already janet cried oh no a little only a little hardly anything here people fall in love in england in such a mathematical way but there is a callow artist on the age and go lightly tick has become quite mad lately and solomon i mean mr rattray will propose next week he thinks i won't dare to refuse the sub-editor how i shall laugh at him afterwards if he gives me any trouble i shall threaten to write up the interview for the pictorial news on the whole though i dare say i'd better not suggest such a thing he would want it for the age he is equal to any personal sacrifice for the age is that all asked janet turning away her head you are thinking of john kendall ah 
there it becomes exciting from what you see janetta mia what should you think myself i don't quite know don't you find him rather a good deal interested janet had an impulse of thankfulness for the growing darkness i i see him so seldom she said oh it was the last time the very last time she would let elfrida talk like this well i think so elfrida went on coolly he fancies he finds me curious original a type just now i dare say he thinks he takes an anthropological pleasure in my society but in the beginning it is all the same thing my dear and in the end it will be all the same thing this delicious loti and she picked up as the day what an anthropologist he is with a feminine bias janet was tongue-tied she struggled with herself for an instant and then i wish you'd stay and dine she said desperately how thoughtless of me elfrida replied jumping up you ought to be dressing dear no i can't i've got to sup with some ladies of the alhambra to-night it will make such lovely copy but i'll go now this very instant halfway downstairs janet in a passion of helpless tears heard elfrida's footsteps pause and turn she stepped swiftly into her own room and locked the door the footsteps came tripping back into the library and then a tap sounded on janet's door outside elfrida's voice said plaintively i had to come back do you love me are you quite sure you love me you humbug janet called from within steadying her voice with an effort i'm not at all sure i'll tell you to-morrow but you do cried elfrida departing i know you do End of chapter nineteen